I'm Allendale's chief meteorologist, Ryan Martin, here for 5M Publishing, and we're going to talk a little bit of international weather now outside some of the areas that we normally think about uh, impacting crop production and, and markets. And we're going to start with China. Uh, we haven't heard much out of China so far, and to me, if you don't hear things, that's usually a sign that things aren't just okay, uh, they're more than okay. Here over the past two to three weeks, started to hear just a little bit of talk about dryness and heat out of China. In my opinion, watching the heat aspect of this, that might be something that's a little bit overblown. We're, we might be talking the heat up just a little bit. That's what I like to call heat mongering, if you will. Uh, but the moisture, that is a developing story. We ran some numbers across uh, Chinese areas, and right now most of the Chinese corn, bean, and you know what, I'm going to throw the northeast part of China in there as well, the, the big wheat areas. A lot of areas in there running about one to three inches behind normal for the past 30 days. Now, you go out to 60 and 90 days, you know, there's not that big of a deal. But the past 30 have been drying up just a little bit. Now, keep in mind, China is going to be on the basic same timetable as what we're seeing in the United States with regard to growing season and even over into Europe. So keep in mind that we're moving through the heart of some fairly significant times in China, especially with soybeans. So dryness right now isn't welcome. Now, I don't think we've reached the point where this is a major, major news story, and hence the reason why we're not hearing much out of there. I also don't think we've reached the point where we're going to be hearing uh, numbers get pulled down at all, especially uh, when you think about the official Chinese numbers are often very hard to get pulled down with regard to production, even in uh, normal situations. They just kind of print what they print, and off we go. But keep an eye on this. If we see this dry period extend another two, three weeks, we might have a little bit more story to talk about. So that's something to keep in mind there. Uh, what about Russia? What about Ukraine? You know, the geopolitical risk right now is definitely taking center stage, but undermining this, uh, coming kind of coming underneath, is a little bit of dryness uh, in eastern Russia, a little bit of dryness in Ukraine. We actually had one to two big rain events earlier in the month of July, but since then we've seen things kind of shut off. Again, I, I put this in the same area as China. Something to pay attention to, not a big talking point yet, but uh, we could see a slight pullback in production uh, across the former Soviet Union. Areas that are looking the best right now, far southern areas, uh, the southern uh, region, the central region. Once you get up over toward the, the, the Volga region, that's where things start to dry out just a little bit. And then Ukraine, of course, drying as well. Also want to talk just a little bit about Australia. The main reason Australia is in the news is because, you know what, this El Nino situation just continues to have a life of its own. It's amazing. We have an El Nino that has not been classified yet. It hasn't been a true named El Nino situation, and yet we've got everybody talking about it as if it's a done deal. You've got the Australians concerned about their wheat crop because of dryness associated with El Nino. The way I see El Nino working out here, it's going to be a moderate event. I do not see any serious ramifications right now in Australia. As a matter of fact, as we go out of their dormancy period and into the, the start of their growing season where we start to really green this crop up, it really looks to me like we're going to be seeing timely rains. Would I say ample? Probably not. Is it going to be the west, best weather situation they've had ever? No. Is it going to be one of the better weather scenarios they've had in the past two, three, four years? Probably. All right, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But right now, I think most of the talk about concern in Australia, a little overblown. Looking at the dryness in Brazil and Argentina right now as well, but southern Brazil, Rio Grande de Sul, where we're seeing soybeans uh, trying to work through when we have the sugarcane crop. Plenty of moisture here the next two to three weeks, so that will not be an issue either. And that's what we've got there.